thanks for making it so sweet for us in the um, meeting. Um, and uh, we'd like to go ahead with a question that's been picking our brains for a long time and we'd like to share our um, ideas around it uh, with you as, as we, uh, along with our own guides. So there's this term that's been making the um, so there's been term, this term that's been making the rounds, uh, which is open design. Um, maybe some of you have heard it or run into it at some point, maybe some of you um, are uh, fortunate at the point. Or in the right, the tip is on the top of the camera. Uh, okay, thank you. Um, but uh, we've seen it applied to so many contexts, some of them like uh, true free software based, uh, sharing enabled. Uh, design principles and others um, just uh, putting stuff out there and calling it open. Um, it turns out that then by jumbling um, possible definitions and using this loaded term that is uh, open, uh, we end up with an expression that has no fixed or actually stable meaning because it can mean so many things that it might as well mean nothing at all. Um, so by describing this wide set of practices with little in common, um, it's not a useful term, and that's, in case you're wondering, that's really the point of this talk, it's really about how open design is really not, a, by itself, just like this, a useful term at all. Um, going beyond that, um, it might, might as well be harmful too, um, because as um, designers who are involved with free software and free cultural principles, um, Having um, a term that kind of floats around the, the way you do things, but then again it might mean the complete opposite, um, also have, brings the risk of decharacterizing our work uh, as designers who work around uh, free and open uh, principles. So um, we start by stating that this term open design and using it indiscriminately is actually somewhat dangerous to the kind of uh, work of advocacy and uh, defense of free and open principles that we do here at um, LGN. And to give a little context, we will speak a bit about what we do and who we are, because even though there are many familiar faces, maybe some of you don't know don't know us. So we we have background in design. When we finished our studies in two thousand and nine. We shifted to uh, free and free Libra and open source software. So we really changed from the things that we learned while we were studying to a different set of tools and a different way of doing things. We started our design studio, Manufatura Independent, in 2010. And it was also in the same year that we started publishing the Libra Graphics magazine together with Ginger Coombs. And this is a print publication that we felt was really something that was missing to show the work that was being done and that was a crossing between free Libra and open source software, uh, free culture, art and design, and which was also a printed object to show that you can actually do all kinds of professional work using these kind of tools. So for us, terminology is a real issue, something that's really important, and that's why we, we've been debating this question uh, between ourselves and maybe with a few other people as well, and we wanted to put this forward. It's something that we're really not sure about yet. If you count the number of question marks in our summary description, I think we won. Uh, <laughs> we have the biggest number of question marks because we really don't have an answer yet. And we think we need a word or a term to describe the kind of things that we do because it's indeed a different way of doing design where we, we experiment, we hack, we try different uh, kinds of ways of doing things and we actually like having meaning, meaningful conversations about the tools that we're using. Oh, this is... Okay, so this is uh, actually supposed to be slightly source design manifesto. If we go back to our folder. Um, well, never mind. I'll actually read it out loud. So, um, <laughs> yeah, don't worry. yeah, I'll just read it out. Um, so this is a the screenshot of, it's a napkin um, note of called the open source design manifesto. 
Um, and, and I will give enough context. I'll just read out. So it says, I will find opportunities to design in the open, share good and bad, find time for meaningful projects, openly participate in discussions, work with others by choice, and improve my toolbox. So this was a manifesto that we found uh, published on the website that's called Open Source Open Design, Open Design Foundation. So this is uh, some kind of organization or collective that call themselves Open Design Foundation. It was started by a designer which is an employee at uh, Adobe and it has this manifesto where they talk about their principles and the kind of things that they believe in or think that open design means. And when we, we read this kind of manifesto, we think, again, we go back to the open design problem, that it's a very vague kind of goals that, that you have here. You can't really find a clear mention of tools or any connection to free software or licenses. So it's really puzzling for us how you could call this open design, but again, that's why we think it's a vague term. Um, so for context, and this is an issue that's pretty dear to us and might be for quite a few of you, um, is where the term open actually comes from. So again, not just open design, but open whatever uh, is also right now a kind of umbrella term for um, what, what can mean a lot of things, but um, terms haven't been so loosely defined for a long while. And the term open, <coughs> when it comes to software, comes clearly from the open source um, term, which came about in 1997 as an alternative for uh, the term free software um, that had been um, in use. Um, it's not just a semantic division, I mean, it's a quite ideological one. Um, that's been drawing a lot of um, arguments and ire that we are going to try to avoid here, but still try to make some, a couple of points about this. Um, so open source uh, is clearly the, the direction that has been opted to just describe the technical aspect of software or culture or what have you, the fact that the code is open. On the other hand, the notion of uh, free software or free culture um, deals with the principle, the idea of the tool and the motivation behind it, which would be to make you free, the idea of freedom. And this kind of um, was problematic to a specific sector who wanted to um, push away from the, from the more marked um, um, ideological undertones of uh, the idea of freedom and software. So the term open source has been proposed with a lot of success, um, as we know right now. Um, and uh, usually we find that a lot, and uh, with the proposition, especially also in design, we found this on other fields, the idea that uh, open source is good for business, um, which is also one of the main roots of the term open source, is also to make it palatable to companies and other entities who might not really enjoy uh, the word freedom, um, but they might enjoy the, the, the software. Um, and uh, we defend, and those are defended as good for business. Um, in design, we see this. I mean, uh, you might have seen, we have seen a lot of references by designers, traditional designers, to say the noun project. Like how cool it is to have so uh, a lot of clip art and icons that we can use without paying for it. Um, or free fonts, um, which again, uh, I mean, why why should we pay? I mean, there is this great thing called open source where we don't have to pay. And of course, uh, I, I feel agreed, this is kind of the, the saddest and least interesting perspective on, on uh, freedom and openness, because it's not just about money, it's not also about ease of use, it's really about doing things together. It's being able, for instance, with the fonts example, uh, the notion that I am free to amplify the typeface, say, with my own language, which is not represented there, and that is absolutely illegal to do with a non-free font. Um, and so there is quite a lot more than, than business propositions, um, which we think also have been kind of uh, made up the most of the, the open uh, design discourse as well, uh, leaving out the idea of um, the history 
of <coughs> freedom in sharing and uh, improve, collectively improving um, um, everyone's then another term that you've been seeing around used as well is the term open source design. And for us, this one, in comparison to open design, is a lot more tangible. It's a lot more clear in what it that it has a connection to open source in, in some way because it's there in the name. And so you can connect it to the open source software definition. So we, we understand that something that you would call open source design means that you are providing the user with full freedoms. So he will be able to open, study, modify and distribute the work. And, um, and this means, we, we kind of figure, if you use this term, that you are providing the source files, you're publishing them, and you are doing so using open formats so that anyone can open those files uh, using a tool that's not proprietary. You're also using Libre Assets, so that same person can open the file and can use the fonts and the icons that you, you've put together um, and other things because they're there and they have a license that allows them and you to do that. And you're also, oh, sorry. And you're also using open licenses, which are a keystone to allowing that kind of freedom for the user. Um, <coughs> going beyond that and moving to, uh, towards a conclusion, there's a couple more issues around uh, this open design and uh, this uh, with the growing uh, interest by uh, design and traditional design field uh, for the open source and free uh, ecosystem. But then again, it also brings more terminological dilemmas that we would like to touch, uh, even if we don't have answers for all of them. So uh, one of them is, um, there, is uh, there have been efforts to uh, bring together designers and uh, open, free and open source uh, software projects. Um, and one of them uh, is, uh, brings the name open source design. Uh, they're a really cool and vibrant uh, collective um, who is extremely active in trying to solve the gap uh, right now between traditional designers who are also looking for uh, worthy causes to, uh, to employ their talent in and also free software projects that might benefit from the, uh, from the designer's input. Uh, so um, it's a fantastic uh, goal, but um, we uh, then started picking with the idea of uh, if you're a traditional designer and um, if you come to a free software project and you're working with them, but if you're working with proprietary <coughs> tools, which is the case in many of the examples that we've seen, so designers who want to contribute, like with graphic assets for uh, open source projects, but um, they're still using uh, Adobe tools. So, um, again, all power to them, and it's already uh, good that designers are manifesting an interest, but is this a different kind of design, so that it warrants a kind of a term like open source design, uh, even though um, what's open source is actually your client, and none of it uh, relates to your own practice, because it's pretty much the same. That's, uh, so we um, were wondering if we, we aren't talking actually about design for open source. And again, um, it's a fantastic gateway drug still, uh, for um, designers who use uh, proprietary software to uh, be able to get involved in free software projects because they will be uh, faced with the need to use an open license, therefore um, figuring out what an open license is, and that's already great. Um, also negotiating with developers because you cannot just, and that's something that you learn quickly, you cannot just come with your uh, fantastic designer vision and the developers will, will bow to you and stop what they're doing and implement your beautiful vision. We know that does not happen. And that's actually an issue right now. And so, as a designer, you also get this uh, need and uh, um, hopefully the skill to negotiate and communicate uh, and um, do this, uh, try to make a successful transaction to, for, for everyone to, uh, to win. Um, but still, again, like uh, this is a talk about terminology, which is why we are picking on this uh, specific term. So the last um, uh, dilemma for us is 
we've hinted at it. Uh, what's uh, what about the tools? So if you're talking about open anywhere in your practice, um, uh, what about the tools? What, what I mean, can we use proprietary software um, and still have a practice that we can call as open? This is an ongoing discussion, has been going on for years. The forums of the Open Source Design Collective are also um, vibrant with this um, discussion. And I'm, again, it's one that every single one of us will have uh, an opinion about. Um, and we have ours. Um, and our um, proposition for this uh, dilemma, uh, can, does it, is it acceptable, is it um, fruitful? To, uh, to consider proprietary tools in an open source design um, scene. And uh, we're, we're really not so sure um, because we, s we find a, a deep contradiction in the notion that you, on the one hand, you want free and open source software to succeed, um, so we want to help these projects, but at the same time, uh, you're not using uh, this uh, paradigm that you want to succeed and you want people to use the software, but you're not using it yourself. Um, <clears throat> so, on one hand, um, there is the will to, for contribution. On the other hand, uh, you're staying, uh, uh, and by you I mean uh, an abstract designer who will stick to proprietary software tools while um, practicing um, open design, whatever that is. Um, and if you're actually not using free software tools because they're not good for real work, then on one hand you're doing a good job for the free software projects, on, on the other hand you're being extremely counterproductive to the actual free software tools that you're not using. Um, so, um, and this, this is something that uh, was showcased to us a few years ago when we noticed that Canonical, uh, the company that builds the Ubuntu uh, so, uh, Linux distribution, uh, their design department was actually um, based on Mac computers and Adobe software. And that really uh, got us um, surprised. And that's not the only case of um, open-minded companies using closed source software, uh, closed source design uh, pipelines and workflows. And, and this is uh, somewhat concerning uh, to us because if, if we were talking about anything else that would not be designed, like integrating a proprietary component in your browser software or your Linux distro, that would be absolutely not acceptable. Why? But then, um, <clears throat> um, or even if you open up that component, it's, it can only be built using a proprietary tool, but that's accepted, that seems to be accepted uh, in the realm of design. Um, so we find still that using free and open source software is the most fundamental uh, contribution that designers can make to the ecosystem more than designing icons. Um, and more than any other kind of practice is actually using those tools because that leads to being furious with those tools, you know, uh, you know the feeling when you start using this one, and that fury uh, hopefully gets uh, ported over to constructive, um, uh, constructive anger uh, that leads you to contact people, to figure out the problems that you have, figure out you're not alone, and then you, you might end up here in this room, which is really uh, what we would like. Um, yeah. To close. So we don't don't really have an answer. We this is a question we think it's really important to think about what term or words we use to describe our practice. Uh, we hope well we decided to propose this talk because we wanted to give our contribute to the discussion. We wanted to put it out there and to know what you think about it. Uh, we I think we come to the conclusion that Open design as a label is really not something we should use anymore, but we also are not sure what would be the way to call it. And because we are in the Libre Graphics meeting, we think maybe Libre design would be a possibility. And maybe another one would be FLOSS design. As, so FLOSS stands for Free Libre and Open Source Software Design. But yeah, again, it's not an answer. It's just something to think about. Yeah, so that's that. Just um, all that, anything that you take from this talk, if there's anything, just hopefully stop using the term open design and let's look for something else.
spectacularly well for time, uh, so Pascal sets up. We can't actually start his talk until 10.50, uh, so if anyone has any burning comments for Anna and Ricardo, this could be your moment. Trying to be fair, so the describing. Um, so Andreas was um, asserting that it's probably not as um, desirable to try and force people to use uh, the free software and open source tools, um, but rather focus on the files actually being shareable and interchangeable. Um, no, we we completely agree. Um, that's there is a spectrum of contribution, and we've tried to outline it. I hope we didn't do a bad job at it, that you have this kind of spectrum that it's desirable to have people going through that and maybe they don't get to the end, that's for sure. Uh, on the other hand, I, I think it's also useful that we don't settle for little um, and that we actually discuss, for instance, why would a designer not just pick up a free software tool right away? Um, yeah, um, at the same time, we were struggling a lot with this talk, like, at what, which point are we, uh, are we talking about uh, what the world that uh, needs, uh, what needs fixing, and then what we would like to, to, to be there. And of course, as you said, we would, we would all like to have people using free and open source software, but barring, and given the inherent difficulties and uh, changing your tool, of course, it's, um, it's really, pretty much okay if people stick just to uh, releasing stuff as open. Um, our point here, I think, is that we can, we can still push forward and uh, I think we can still be demanding and saying, um, this is okay, but the next step is even better and again, uh, it will make a lot more of a difference if you actually are in it, about, if you are in it to make a difference. So the, the point here was uh, maybe it's not um, we should not talk about the open source tools being uh, not being as good as the others, but maybe there's more to it in that uh, why are people not uh, getting into them um, um, in a more massive uh, way? Yes, and also why are we not identifying the barriers that are blocking those people from changing the tools? I think that's a great point, because when you are not changing your tools, then you are somehow stating that there some, there's some kind of issue with using different tools, and maybe there's something missing. And so that's exactly a very good way to go forward with this idea of transitioning to a different kind of tool, so finding what's there uh, stopping you from doing that, and of course, as you spoke about in your talk, we also completely agree that 
it's a very a very present uh, my so it's what you learn in school it has to do with the kind of tools that you learn in school and that you are used to uh, being the standard for the industry practice and we think that's that's the reason why it's so hard to get away from those tools and if you put them forward in an early stage then it's it becomes easier that you see those tools as tools that you can use for any kind of work and that the tools don't make you not being able to do something you want to do they're just exactly as the other ones you just have to do it differently maybe point that maybe considering the, the many problems and the dilemmas that we are facing in the design and free software world, uh, maybe the naming issue uh, might be distracting. I think you really point out a very good issue, because it's true. Um, that's, uh, like like we, we had in the last slide for thanking people, uh, you stop being, seeing the forest for the trees once you start nitpicking on the, on the terminology. Um, I think you're right, and I hope, uh, I really hope that uh, we didn't um, uh, sh pass this on as kind of the most pressing issue that we're facing. We're completely with you that um, there, there's much more to it. Um, our point here was really um, so. We also have to claim some kind of uh, practice on the ground, so we need to point what's wrong with naming open design and open source design in things where we think they're not being used correctly because that also makes our practice being less, I don't know. Yeah, no, it, it kills the visibility uh, in a way because it jumbles our practice into a much uh, dry, awful, grey mass of things that we are not related to. So that's another of the dangers perhaps. That's